pay me a moment to get organized. So Amen, brother. hurry up and wait. I'm really glad for the opportunity to get up and be able to say something for the Lord. Amen, and what I've got for you tonight may be old hat for a lot of you, but it never hurts to be reminded again. Yeah. So I hope that it's uh, a good encouragement for you. Yeah. Uh, often, whenever I visit churches and present our ministry and give them some words, uh, my, my short messages usually come with a rebuke. Um, because there's a lot of Christians out there that know better, that should be serving the Lord, but won't. Amen. There's a time for a rebuke, but there's also a time for encouragement. Right. And that's what I want to give you tonight. Especially after having gone out to the street today and seeing the ones who were able to make it. And if you weren't able to make it, don't be, don't be kicked in the shins. This isn't against you. But just to see the people that were able to make it, that went out there and just stood. Amen. And that really warmed my heart. Amen, brother. And the Lord showed up in a way that he could, and he confirmed to me. That's just, he's in that. Yeah, amen. So I want to give you some words of encouragement. Before I get into the scripture, I'll give you an update on our ministry. Yes. Sir. Uh, without giving you numbers and all this stuff, I've already given you that. But I'll tell you that we're getting ready to leave uh, Wednesday to go up north. We'll be going through Kentucky on up into Indiana uh, to visit Teresa's parents. But along the way, we're going to visit three or four churches. And this will be the first trip we have in our new RV so we'll just see how that goes it's going to be a big learning experience for us amen brother say a prayer for us as we go if you would for a, a number of things being in that little box together for that amount of time but also that the lord may use our efforts right. for his purpose amen uh, and we'll be gone for one week so that's the latest that, that we've gotten into amen. and as he uh, as we continue to walk um I continue to try to yield and to see if, if he would open more doors. And as he opens them, I need enough sense enough to be able to go through them. Keep this ministry in your prayers. And I know a lot of you do. And that means I have a, a ton to me and Teresa. Amen. Pray, Amen. Praying people. Amen. But uh, from the word, let's look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I want to try to, be, try to give you... Some words of encouragement, those of you who are serving the Lord in a way that you know and the Lord knows, I don't need to know. And for the ones that quite yet, quite yet haven't figured out what they could do, or they're interested in getting into some kind of service, maybe it will be um, an encouragement for you to get moving. Amen. Second Corinthians chapter 5, is everybody there? Yes, sir. And let's begin about, uh, let me get on the same page. Let's begin about verse 6. I'll read down to about verse 11 for now, okay? Therefore, we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith and not by sight. We are confident, point number one, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor, point number two, that whether present or absence, we may be accepted of him. Amen, no, brother. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, another point, we persuade men. But we are made manifest unto you, and I trust also are made manifest in your conscience. Stop. Let's go back. And let's, I want to illustrate a couple points for you. Let's go back to verse 8. And the Apostle Paul speaking, he says, We are confident, I say rather to be uh, absent from the body and be present for the Lord. Speaking to Christians, and I believe everybody here is most likely saved. I hope so. So I'm talking to Christians. If you're not, tonight would be a good night to ask questions and get that figured out. Right. But Paul says here, we are confident. Oftentimes in our Christian life, we lose our confidence. Maybe we'll get tossed around with different doctrines. Maybe we'll just, the Lord doesn't feel very close to us as he once did. We'll kind of get uh, lukewarm or we'll get cold. And often, I mean, there, there can be many reasons, but oftentimes there's a, there's a reason for that. So if there's anybody here that doesn't quite feel close to the Lord like they once did, or they don't have that confidence that, well, they've got waiting on Drop down to verse 9. It says, wherefore we labor. See, a man that's doing something for the Lord on the front lines or the, the people behind the lines staying by the stuff, so to speak, Involved in the labor, they are confident. The Lord is very real to them and very present. That's right. And if you're a Christian that doesn't feel the Lord is very close to you, well, check your service. What are you doing? And when I say service, it's not always about you should be out winning souls. 
on the front line, always. There are many other things you can do in the line of service to help the ones on the front line. Yes, That's right. So the question would be, what are you doing laboring for the Lord? And that word labor is exactly that, is labor. Right. It's not, a, well, I go to church, and I do good to get there, and now I'm in the habit of going, so that counts. No, that is not labor. That is not even a reasonable service. That is failing not to assemble yourself together. That's not even a good service. Right, amen. So labor is something a lot different. Examples of labor could be just handing a gospel tract to the clerk at the gas station. Going out and standing against abortion, holding up a sign. And I know the Lord's in that. He's, I mean, not to sound charismatic, he spoke to my heart there. He says, we're two or three together in my name, I'll be there too. Doctrinally, that may not be for us. That thing runs all the way through the scripture. Yeah. When we go out there and do that, and if we're doing right and what he wants us to do and labor for him, guess what? There he is. And that's that confidence. Amen. I know what I've got here, and I know what I've got over there. If you have any doubts about that, or you might not have any doubts about your salvation, but just doubts about your walk with the Lord, start with your service, or what are you doing? But let's go on down. That we all must appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that we may give an account, and that we may receive the things done in the body, whether it be good or bad. This is not a short message on the judgment seat of Christ. But here's something practical for you to take with you. And I don't know where I picked this up, but I'm glad that I did because it helps me be disciplined in my service for the Lord. I think I've told you this before, but you need two dates on your calendar. Today's date and what you have to get done. Pay your bills, go to work, whatever you have to do. And the judgment seat of Christ. And if you have those two days on your calendar as time goes on, and you fulfill the things on both days on your calendar, guess what? You've laid up for yourself a nice chunk of change in heaven and it'll be there when you get there. Right. That's good investing. So when you labor for the Lord, you have that confidence. And as you go and you and you serve the Lord business like, we know we love the Lord. You don't have to grovel at his feet all day long. He knows you love him too, or you wouldn't bother to go do anything for him. Right. But the Lord is a businessman. And the business is winning people to himself. So treat it like a business. Be disciplined in your soul winning or your track passing or whatever it is that you do. But let's go on down. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. In verse 11, we persuade men. Now listen, some people teach that when you get there, the servants are going to be beat with many stripes and this, that, and other. I don't know whether that's so or not. I don't quite get that and I don't go along with that and I don't teach that to anybody. But I do know the terror of the Lord is the same Lord that will save you by grace and give you rewards in heaven for your service also puts a man in hell. Yeah. An unquenchable fire, a place of torment. That's terrible to me. Yeah. So I don't have to worry about me getting beat with many stripes. If he chooses to do that, then I guess then I'll have it coming. I've earned it. But the terror I see here is people are going to hell. That's right. We are the ones, especially in a church like this, that have the truth. We believe the Bible. We know how to rightly divide it and give somebody the right doctrines, right. the right gospel. So the question then is, since we have the truth, what are we doing with it? Because of the terror of the Lord, we persuade them, try to win them to Christ so they don't have to go to hell. Right. So let's drop down a little bit to verse 18. Hell am I on time? Pretty good? You'll ring the bell, brother. Verse 18 says, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given us the ministry of reconciliation. Amen. Paul talking to the church age believers, he has given us the ministry of reconciliation. Right. And once in my life, I didn't understand the reason of living. Saved, but I wasn't in the will of God. I wasn't living for him. I was out in the world. So I thought, well, what's this all about? There has to be more. Well, when you, when you draw closer to him and you get in the scriptures, well, right here is the answer to that question. He has given you the ministry of reconciliation. And if you drop down to verse... Um, 19, he says, To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That means he's given us that job to take. The, verse 20 says, Now then we are ambassadors of Christ. An ambassador is one that sin on behalf of another to take the gospel. I'm going to give you three things as practical that if you want to write them down that you have to have if you're going to win anybody to Christ. And you've got to get it nailed down in your own study. Because people, other Christians will come along as they have me, and they'll cause you to doubt. And if you don't have these three things, you may have a gun, but they're trying to take your bullets. 
Amen. Here are the three things that you have to have. Write them down if you can. One, you have to have the very words of God as your authority. Amen. If you don't have his words, you have an opinion. Right. And you know how those can get. Amen, brother. First Peter chapter 1, verse 23. Know it, star it, put exclamation points by it. And then it says that we are born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, yeah. by the word of God. Amen. This book has the power to quicken somebody and give them life. That's right. If you don't know that, you've already lost your bullet. Come on. But you need something else. You need Paul's gospel. There are many gospels in the Bible. Gospel means good news. Right. As Adam taught today, there are many dispensations and covenants that God had with mankind, but they're not all the same. But the gospel today is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. That's the good news. How that Christ died for our sins according yep. to the scriptures. Right. Was buried and he rose again from the dead on the third day according to the scriptures. And if you want some eyewitnesses, then you drop on down. He says he was seen of Cephas and then of the twelve. There's 13 and he got above 500 brethren. That gives an account that that happened. So now you've got Paul's gospel. If you need further on that, Paul tells you to the Gentiles, I magnify mine office. Find that verse. Put that with it. Because you need to know why Paul. You'll have people trying to get you in water and say you're saved when they dunk you. Right. They'll say you have to repent of all of your sins and then present yourself to Christ and he'll save you. Yeah. No. Yeah. Come on, brother. Because that's not what Paul tells us. That's right. And lastly, you need the blood. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. Well, let me turn there. I want to give that to you. Amen, brother. Give it to you right. In whom we have redemption through his blood. It don't say through the water, through your <coughs> repenting of sins, through your asking for forgiveness, through anything. But it's through his blood. He shed it on the cross. It's finished. It's done. And take the payment. In whom we have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And grace, surprisingly, is a word that most people don't understand what it means. But it's when somebody gives you something that you didn't contribute toward one else. That's right. So if you say, well, if you ask them if they're saved and they say, well, yeah, I did. You, you know what you have. You didn't do nothing. It's what he did. Are you right. trusting in that? And then you can couple that with Romans 10, 9 through 13. It tells you how to receive that gift. So when you have all those verses marked in your Bible, that's just a little practical something I'd like to give you. Because if you don't have those three things, you're off for the races trying to do something for the Lord, but perhaps without knowledge. There's a lot of zealous people, but they don't really have the wherewithal because they haven't been in the book. Right. Or they don't understand right divisions and whatnot. In closing... I want to uh, leave you with this. I still good on time? I remember when I was a little kid, a little older than Destiny, I was at a vacation Bible school, standing up here, knobby kneed and big eyed and goofy looking. And we would stand up there and do the songs. And I remember one particular song that the Sunday school teacher had us do, and everybody's heard it. I'm going to quote you the lyrics to it. Pay attention. Now, this Sunday school teacher was notorious for. She was not the first one to sign up to teach Sunday school or, or VBS. She did it because nobody else wanted to. Perhaps there's somebody here that's in that role. But don't think the Lord's not going to look at that and bless you for that. Because here I am. That's been about 25 to 28 years ago. And I'm telling you that song she gave me. But a whole different perspective. With a little bit more maturity. Not much. But a little bit more maturity and understanding. All right? And that song goes, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I decided that when I was a kid, but I wasn't quite saved yet. But I decided that's the real deal. That's the way I want to go. No turning back. No turning back. My question is, have you decided to follow Jesus? I didn't ask, have you heard about him? Come on. Have you decided to follow him? That's right. It ain't to learn. And you can have all the knowledge in the world. You can read your Bible. There are people in here that know their book. But have you decided to follow Jesus? Think about it. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Yeah. Though none go with me, I still will follow. Though no, none go with me, I still will follow. No turning back, no turning back. If you have to stand out there on the street in the middle of Sweetwater amongst your community of peers and look like a fool and get the, the California salutes and the, the colorful language, yeah. are you willing? Are you willing to go to work not on company time or against your employer, but are you willing to speak up amongst your friends, even though nobody around you is a Christian? 
Though none go with me, I will follow. Yeah. My cross I'll carry till I see Jesus. It repeats it three times. No turning back, no turning back. My cross I'll carry. What does that mean? Think about it. Alone, whenever you make that stand, guess what's going to come? Some level of persecution. That's right. So. There are going to be people that exit from your life. That's right. And once we're there, are you willing to lovingly say, I've got to stand for the Lord and you're wrong. I'm yeah. going with him. Yeah, come on. Are you willing? Have you done it? Are you in that Are you in that predicament right now where you, you're torn between, I got these loved ones and these friends and these family members that are not living right, but they're bringing me down. They're ruining my testimony or my Come on, brother. walk with the Lord. Are you willing to just say, I'll be here when you're ready and let it go? The Lord says to, uh, Paul tells you to don't have fellowship with them. Don't even eat with them so they may repent and get right. And here's your last uh, stanza in this. The world behind me, the cross before me. Three times it repeats, no turning back, no turning back. The pastor preached on it today about the, the children of Israel out in the wilderness, and they wanted to go back to the, to the world where the leeks and the onions are because they had it better over there. Yeah. But in your Christian life, right now where you're at, are you still dabbling with the world? Do you want to run back over here and pick up the, the sex, drugs, and the rock and roll because you Come haven't on. had enough? Come on, brother. And I've been there. Saved out in the world, but I couldn't testify to this lyric right here that I, the world was behind me. I was out in the world. Now, I got saved. That's, that's in stone. But then I went behind enemy lines. I went back to my old father and was serving him like an idiot. Yeah, come on. Is the world behind you and the cross before you? And I hope, and it takes the Lord's spirit to open your understanding of what that means. And as the closer you draw to him, the world will look dim. People will be dim. You won't have the commonalities that you had with your old friends. That's right. You'll be living in a house with somebody that you don't even know anymore. How about that? Because the Lord says, I come not to, he didn't come to bring peace and sing kumbaya. He'll split you. Right. The cross before me. Now, I hope none of us in here ever have to endure martyrdom and go to a crucifixion or an electric chair or go to jail for our faith. Who knows? This country's gone off the rails, so I wouldn't be surprised. The question would be is, are you willing all the way to the end through faith, look into what you've got on that other side and endure it and continue to follow Jesus. If you've stepped off out of line, make it tonight to be like, hey, you know what? I haven't been living right. I haven't been serving, whatever it may be. Yeah, and before you leave, just in your heart, you don't have to necessarily come to an altar. You can. But in your heart, you tell the Lord and surrender. You're right. I'm wrong. And I want to be, I want to leave here on the right path with you and I want to continue on with you. That's right. Amen. And that's just the Christian life. That's everybody in here that's been there. If you're ever going to follow him, Amen. there's no shame in it. What's shameful is you recognize that and you refuse to surrender because you want to play in the sandbox instead of getting getting going. Right. So I hope this is a help to you. If you have any hate mail, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> <laughs>